right, check it out. It's uh, it's uh, June seventh. I know that much. Ju- not, uh, Juneteenth coming up, gang. Celebrate. Uh, also, the Mermaid Parade. I can't go to any of the celebrations. I work on weekends now. Gang, I hate my life. But, you know, today <laughs> we're going to discuss two movies that won't make you hate your Well, that's not even true. These, these kind of do make you hate your life. But, you know, it is crazy. We'll get into it. We're covering David Spade's Joe Dirt franchise today. Joe Dirt from the year of our Lord 2001 came out the second before 9-11. It's like Joe Dirt came up in theaters you saw that mullet and then the plane hit tower one all right is that true i have april <laughs> it is april i'm just joking oh, okay. actually it came out right before 420 i think they thought they were gonna get some 420 runoff on this one yeah i don't know if it worked it did this was come on it was a hit it got a sequel 14 years later yeah all right it's uh, like the incredibles wait i didn't introduce you why don't you shut your mouth oh sorry. all right this this show has a format. Logan. All right, it's Logan. <laughs> hey, come on in. Yeah. Hey guys. Logan B. Aderte. Oh my god, dude. Is that pretty good? That's more than pretty good, Logan. I don't think we're gonna <laughs> top it. Well, it's yours. You didn't you didn't come up with one? No, I guess I didn't. I guess I didn't really think about it. Listen, but Joe Dirt. <laughs> What a franchise this was. I mean, it's crazy that it's that we're talking about it as though it's a franchise. It's not. It's a movie that came out in 2001 and was like mildly successful. And uh, and then for some reason, they, they thrusted a sequel upon us. On Crackle. On Crackle of all things. I mean, let's talk about it. Do you know anything about Crackle? Yes. I know that it came around and it was free. And then it had movies. Yeah. So Crackle... I've been to it a few times, like the the website. I think I had the app on an old phone. And um, it always looked fake to me. Like it looked like a parody. Like, you know, when uh, people in movies go to a streaming service and it's like sort of a fake Netflix. Sure. Yeah. This is that's what Crackle always looked like to me. Does it still exist? I have to think no. Let's try to go to it right now. All right. Crackle.com. <laughs> Crackle.com, baby. Where are you? Hey, I've got news for you. It exists, and you can watch Edge of Tomorrow on it right now. Really? Is it free? Well, it has to be free, you said, right now. Yeah. They've got Scream 4. Whoa. They've got Hunt for the Wilder People. Fucking Crackle's tearing it up. Better than Netflix these days. Secretly, Crackle's the best streaming service. I don't know about that, but (laughs) what is the best? HBO Max? Yeah, I think it's kind of HBO Max now. They've got extras. The Ricky Gervais show, extras. Well, they're killing That's it. That's a great show. Crackle. They are killing it. They've got they've got Francis Ford Coppola's Peggy Sue Got Married. If you want to watch that movie, check it out on Crackle. No. That's a good movie. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, fine. You don't like that, bro? How about Gerard Butler in Law Abiding Citizen? No. Are you fucking kidding Maybe me? That's Geo a great Storm movie. was on there. All right, all right, hang on, hang on. I'll, I'll I'll catch your fancy. How about John Travolta in the remake of the Taking of Pelham One Two Three? No. Ah. All right, fine. Let me get the off first track. three. You said were good. Scream Four, Edge of Tomorrow, well, something else. I've I've named nothing but Stone Cold classics since we've been here. All right, except for Joe Dirt. Yeah. All right, but. So Crackle bought the Joe Dirt <laughs> sequel. So here's how I used to use Crackle is uh, I used to have this job where you can like listen to music or podcasts all day. And sometimes I would get bored and I knew that Crackle had episodes of Seinfeld on there. Wow. And so I would put it on in my pocket and I would just listen to episodes of Seinfeld because I, I, I knew them so well. I don't need to watch them. That's great. They're mo- mostly verbal anyway. Yeah. What? What? I don't. I don't need to see Michael Richards tripping through that door but isn't over that his and whole over thing again. Is like physical comedy. Yeah, but he'll probably say like, um, "I'm out." You want to see him chug that beer with the cigarette in his mouth, right? Yeah, I do want to see that, and I want to see Elaine. You want to the... see Elaine? 
Hey, is the best scene in Seinfeld history that scene where they all take shots of vodka in the kitchen? Is that the no you know smell I'm scotch? <laughs> yes, the no smell. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, why? I, w- I was thinking about it recently, and I think that might be the no, greatest No, it's probably scene them talking in the history. contest, right? It's probably just that scene. Well, that's listen, that's the party line, but I want to bring another scene, to, an underheralded scene to the table. You know, you know what scene I like? It's like in the finale, the second episode of the finale, when Elaine is with that group running under the bleachers. I think Elaine's hilarious there. That's the uh, Puerto Rican Day Parade. Yeah, that's the penultimate parade. episode. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's funny. Mm. That is good, but maybe maybe not an all timer. Oh, um, all right. You brought up them drinking. Yeah, it was a fucking great episode, bro. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, Joe Dirt. Oh, so that's what I how I used to watch Crackle. That's how we got on that. Okay. Joe Dirt came out in two thousand one. Did you see it? You were three. Nope. I have seen it yeah. in my life. Kind of. Why? What made you watch Joe Dirt? I it's a good question. That's a real question. It's a real question. I, I think mean David's David Spade can't be an important comedian to you. No. I think it was just like on Netflix and I was like twelve years old. It's wild that they had Netflix when you were 12 years old. I don't know if that math adds up. 2010, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I think it was just there. All right. Well, Joe D, it uh, it came out in theaters April 11th, 2001. I didn't see it in theaters. I waited. Yeah. but Why? Why'd you wait? I think I was like pretty much sick of David Spade by this point. Yeah. Was, but, was he an SNL I mean, guy? Yeah, he was an SNL guy. Let's talk about Spade's career. Yeah. He got his start in the 80s. He was sort of like uh, just around a lot. He's in a fucking Paul Schrader movie, Light Sleeper. Wow. <laughs> like you, you'd see him show up. But, um, it, you know, he, uh, he's got a weird history, too. Like he's part of the Spade family. Like, you know, Kate Spade? Yes. He's related like to her. Like a fashion thing? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. So, like, yeah, that's why he, like, he gets laid so much. You know, like <laughs> David Spade's one of the heaviest hitting fuck guys in Hollywood history. Oh, wow. You wouldn't think so looking at him. But, I mean, David Spade has fucked some heavy hitters, Logan. Yeah, what are the names? Do you know about Heather Locklear? Yeah. All right. Laura Flynn Boyle. Okay. All right. Julie Bowen. Yeah. Terry Hatcher. Okay. Uh, Seinfeld. How about, Naya, how about Naya Rivera from Glee? He fucked her oh, she, before R. she died. The last thing she tasted before she died was David Spade's <laughs> That's not true. I made it that up. It was probably water. Yeah. Oh. Logan. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> God. Um. Anyway. I'm sorry. That was terrible. I'm sorry to... It was a good joke. It was a good joke. It was accurate too. Yeah, but it's just a bummer. I- I'll be honest. So, yeah, when that when that happened, I got like very sad. I don't know why I didn't watch that show. I was just like, that's very sad that, that happened to that person. It was just crazy. She had like a kid. She was like thirty horrible, years old. Horrible. It was a horrible thing. I'm very sorry. Yeah. All right. So David Spade, back to this fool. Um, he was on SNL and his shtick was basically I'm like in a feat like I'm a rich snob like that was his character okay you know his 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 most famous sketch was he was an asshole flight attendant and when you'd get off the plane he'd go bye bye yeah is that funny okay it was funny at the time and he also had a thing on weekend update called Hollywood minute where he'd like rip on celebrities all right okay so he was pals with Chris Farley, a much funnier, much larger man. Yeah. Yeah. And so they started making movies for Chris Farley and they would throw David Spade in as his snarky sidekick because they knew Chris Farley had to be just like a big dumb guy and they needed someone to make fun of him. So that became Spade. So they made two movies with those fucking guys, Tommy Boy and Black Sheep. They're both pretty good. All right. Then Farley dies. R.I.P. R.I.P. It's a fucking bummer. What does David Spade do? Well, he goes to TV 
He does an NBC show called Just Shoot Me that I watched every episode of. And uh, then they try to do some movies with him, but they don't know what to do. It's like, this guy's not a star. He's Farley's sidekick, you know? Yeah. I mean, is there anybody like that now? Is there a sidekick that would not get mainstream work if the star died? How about Dominic Mysterio? <laughs> All right. That's funny. All right. <laughs> All right. Lost and Found sorry, was, was his first. Yeah, I know. That was his first big vehicle. Okay. And in that film, he's in love with his neighbor and he steals her dog and then helps her look for her dog and makes her fall in love with him that way. And then <laughs> she finds out he stole her dog and he's still able to convince her to fuck him. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's not a good movie. So that's probably the reason I didn't see Joe Dirt. I saw that movie and I was like, I think I'm good on jo- on David Spade star vehicles. And then I also thought it was weird because he was always such like a, a snob guy. Like that was his comedic persona that it was so strange that he would choose to play like a redneck with a mullet. Yeah. See, I didn't know any of this. Yeah, like I feel like now he's almost known more for Joe Dirt than anything else. Yeah, I agree. I remember when Tiger King was a big thing. They were like, "Oh, cast cast him to David Spade as Joe as uh, Joe Exotic." Right now, if if Tiger King came out in say 1997, that would never be the suggestion. Right, cast Farley as Joe Exotic. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad actually. <laughs> Farley would have nailed that. <laughs> All right. Um. Did anyone watch that fucking thing with Kate McKinnon? Did anyone? Where is that? It's on Peacock. I didn't watch it. They, they filmed the whole thing. There are eight episodes of that thing. I don't know a single person that has watched a second of did it. Did you watch Tiger King 2? Yeah, I did. I did too. I won't be watching a third one. Actually, I will. I, I'm I would. Invested. I of course would. Yeah, I'm, yeah. These lives are crazy. I have to watch it. Yeah. All right. So Joe Dirt comes out. It does a little better than Lost and Found. So they're like, maybe this guy is a star. Right. We'll try and make more movies with him. So they put the next one was Dickie Roberts, former child star, which is actually my favorite of the three. Yeah, I thought you'd like that one. But um, but it didn't do well. It did well at Blockbuster when I worked there. A lot of people rented it. Okay. Did you recommend it? Is that why? I wouldn't say so. No. Uh, and then the next one you see is the bench warmers, okay? Oh, and yeah. he's in that one with Rob Schneider like and John movie. Heater. And notably, if you look at the cover, Schneider's in the middle. Right. He's the good baseball player. He's that but what I'm saying is at this point, Spade's not as big a star as Rob Schneider. Yeah, that's a good call. Probably not Heater either, right? Probably not. I mean, Napoleon Dynamite was like the year before. The Benchwarmers was the first the first test. Like, let's see if this guy's good in movies. And he was What do you think about that movie? Um, it's bad. That does kind but... of fun movie. Yeah, I'll tell you what, there's a sequel to it. Is there? Yeah, and I've seen it. Um, weirdly, because during the pandemic, I met a girl on one of those apps and she was like let's do a date where we like watch a movie you know that was what we were doing back then like we couldn't meet each other fucking hell and uh oh, so we, oh that's what you mean yeah 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 we did like a netflix party date yeah and uh and we watched bench warmers too you guys chat audio or, or like texting how's that work just i think we just texted yeah wow that's weird it was weird yeah weird time all right anyway so uh so Spade, you know, then he goes back to TV with his tail between his legs. He sh- he went on eight simple rules after John Ritter died. He played like their uncle or something who like moved in with them <laughs> to fill the vacuum. And then uh, he he was on the show Rules of Engagement, which was on the air forever. And like nobody liked it. All right. So that's David Spade's career. Well, he had we had grown ups. Well, yeah, I think I think he sort of found his little niche again after Grown Ups. I see that um, he's getting roles in, uh, you know, um, fucking Happy Madison shit. Happy Madison has a deal with Netflix now, where they just make a shit. Ton is he of in Hubie? He's not Netflix. Hubie, is he? I don't think he shows up in Hubie, but he has shown up in some of those Sandler movies. And I watched one called The Wrong Missy that he's oh, the fucking yeah. star of. Laura Lapkus, right? 
Yeah, Lauren Lapkus. I watched it for her, but yeah, you know, I heard that. I heard that was okay. It is. It's okay just for her. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, good for him. Yeah. So that's did did he kiss her? He did, man. He got to kiss that that broad. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I'd love to. She's married. It's a bummer. To who? Some guy. Okay. I think you know what's a bummer about Lauren Lapkus. She's like already, I think di- she's all, she's younger than me, and I think she's already divorced and remarried. Well, I got no chance, man. I mean, I never did. I, I feel like if I was divorced <laughs> that young, I would not get remarried again that young. Agreed. What the fuck is wrong with you? Learn learn a lesson for Christ's sake. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk about the director of Joe Dirt, Denny Gordon, a woman. Could you believe that? I could not believe that. Yeah, I mean. They didn't bring you her know, back for the because, second one. <laughs> I noticed that. I mean, you know, the first movie's, by the way, vastly better directed. Yeah, I agree. And not, ju- and not just because the budget's bigger. It just, like, moves better and, and feels like a real movie. Yeah, in the second movie, we get, like, a flashback to Buffalo Bob in the first movie. And I was, like, reminiscing. Like, damn, I wish I could. That was so much better. Yeah, I remember when these shots looked theatrical. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah all right so denny gordon she got her start on tv man and not like she wasn't an snl person like she was directing like dramatic television on for network i have no idea how she got this job okay all right so but she did she directed this movie and then she got more work after it because it did pretty well she directed what a girl wants with amanda Bynes. yeah she goes to england in that one huh Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, she also directed New York Minute, the Olsen Twins movie. All right. All right. And that was pretty low on my list of every summer movie of the aughts. I saw she um, directed... Patreon.com slash the franchise. I made a list of over 400 movies recently. 422, if I remember correctly. I, I remember... Or I saw she did season two, episode two, Crossroads of Dawson's Creek. You know that one? Boy, um, that might be the one where Jack comes out of the closet. Can you read me the plot description? Oh, I don't have that. Uh, I've got it up here right now. Okay. Dawson gets in trouble with Joey when he reads an entry in her diary about her true feelings about his fantasy life of filmmaking. Yeah, that he actually sucks. Is that Holmes? Katie Holmes? Yeah, Katie Holmes. Meanwhile, Dawson is so self-involved with repairing his love life that he forgets Pacey's 16th birthday. Uh, Oh, no. Jackson? Yep. As a result, Pacey, who also failed his driver's ed test, decides to throw himself a peer party bash with a little help from Andy. Uh, all right. I, I guess I don't particularly remember this one, but, um, you know, I do think this is when um, Michelle Williams' character was getting really depressed and started hanging out with Monica Kina, which led to Monica Kina falling off the pier and dying. Whoa. All right. Well, this title was Crossroads, so I figured it might have been a good episode, but I guess not too memorable. Yeah, not a great one. But season two, I mean, was all killer, no filler. So they're all good. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so after uh, after New York Minute, Denny Gordon retreated back to TV. But because she directed all these comedy movies, she's not getting dramatic TV at work anymore. She mostly was directing uh, comedy TV. So like, she directed some like early american office and uh, i think she's still working these days let's see let's see what her most recent shit is she directed three episodes oh hey it seems like in recent years she's gone back to dramatic television which is pretty cool she directed that waco miniseries which i watched which was great all right great job denny yeah gordon. so denny gordon i think probably right now doing the best work of her career so congrats to her yeah definitely fantastic she graduated from the Yale School of Drama. I don't think she ever thought she'd be directing fucking Joe Dirt. Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Spade wrote this one with Fred Wolf, who is uh, one of his writing partners from SNL, basically. He's just some SNL douchebag. Okay. Yeah. He also wrote Black Sheep for uh, Farley. So I guess they get along. Um. The best thing he's ever done, Logan, is as a director, actually, not as a writer. He directed the movie The House Bunny. Yeah, okay. I like that movie. Who doesn't? Nobody. If you don't don't like The House Bunny, what are we even doing? 
why do they make movies? Yeah, I agree with you. If they're going to make all these movies and you're going to watch The House Bunny and go, no, I don't like that movie. Stop watching movies. What are you doing? They have the lead singer from the All-American Rejects. What more could you want? Yeah. He played... That dude played uh, Jesus's descendant, like the last living descendant of Jesus yeah. on the show Preacher. Yeah. Uh, oh, isn't that... Don't you love that comic? Yeah, I love that comic. Yeah. The all comic right. did not... The comic didn't have the guy from the American... The All-American Rejects on it. Oh. It also has Catherine McPhee, another great... Uh, singer yeah one of the best i would say right, one of the one best of the singers best ever yeah wow <laughs> what a no take. no i'm just kidding i remember when i was uh when i when i still had a life and i was living with a girl and we had a roommate named isaac <laughs> one time i was watching community and Catherine mcphee showed up and i got excited i was like hey fucking Catherine mcphee pretty sweet and they ripped on me so hard for even knowing who she was. What? And I was Come like, on. I was like, you're fucking assholes. She came in second in American Idol. She's a successful performer. She should have won. I, and then they gave me shit for calling her successful. Really? It was uh, so annoying. It's crazy. It, this would happen sometimes. Those two would team up on me. One time I was watching a show with Jeremy Sisto. You know that guy? No. All right. Well, fucking Jeremy Sisto. He was in <laughs> Clueless. You ever see Clueless? Yeah. All right, oh, he's, he's Paul the Rudd? dude. He no, he's the asshole that she wanted to fuck. Who's like rolling with the homies? Hey, I don't remember. All right, well, whatever. All right, <laughs> I don't know why I'm so angry. Well, if you had a comp now. beast in the room, I would have defended you. That's crazy. They don't know Catherine McPhee. Yeah. So Jeremy Sisto, I I once said, man, he's had a great career, huh? And they looked. They they never let me get. They stop. They would just say, great career. He had a great career, and I had to defend myself. I had to get out of that situation. I feel like I've been bullied my entire life, Logan. Yeah, me too. I want to defend myself right now. I said Catherine McPhee should have won. I only mean that she should have won after Chris Daughtry was eliminated at Final Four. I mean, she should have beaten Taylor Hicks. Not not that she should have won over Daughtry, because everyone knows Chris Daughtry should have won that season. Come on. Hey, hey, Logan. Yeah. She deserved to beat Chris Daughtry. Nope. Chris Daughtry, the greatest. Chris Daughtry fucking sucks. Come on. Come on. Chris Daughtry, of all like the American Idol rocker guys, he's not even in the top ten. Top ten? Who's in the? Who's yeah. better? Bo Bice? You like Bo Bice more than Chris no, Daughtry? No, no. Listen, Daughtry's got it over Bo Bice. I'll give you that one. I, but I'll, I'll give you David Cook. David Cook's better. I'll take David Cook happily. He's I'll better. also take Constantine Maroulis, motherfucker. No, Daughtry's better than Constantine. Bitch, Constantine rips Daughtry. No, I disagree with you. He has he's has better. Uh, <laughs> better eyes yeah but doesn't daughtry have that stupid like chin thing does he's he? got like a piercing in his chin piercing he looks like the chin. dude from fucking disturbed i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> he's down with the sickness that motherfucker <laughs> piercing in his chin yeah um all right david spade let's get back to it what so about adam movie? lambert yeah i'll definitely take him yeah, over fucking he's great all those fucks he's great He's in Queen. How can you take Daughtry over the lead singer of Queen? <laughs> but to say he's not in the top 10, I feel like that's pretty crazy. Listen, Daughtry, he should never have even been in the Hollywood round. <laughs> Come on. Didn't, didn't his, uh, I don't want to make you sad. Never mind. What? Nothing, nothing. Ma no, go ahead. Make me sad. I think his, Let's talk about it. I think his daughter died recently. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Remember David Cook's ex-wife died. No, it was his brother. Oh, his brother? Adam Cook. Because on <laughs> Why do you remember that? On his guitar, he would have ACDC for Adam Cook. <laughs> oh, David my Cook. God. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. Or it might oh have just God. said AC for Adam. I don't remember. Here, you want to hear me sing David Cook's debut single? Because I still remember how it sounded. I know it too, but go ahead. Oh, baby, put the light on when I'm gone. All right. I'm good. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Time of My Life. Oh, no, no, that's his American Idol song. I'm talking about his Right, but it was like his single. big winner song. Mm -hmm. That's a great song. I remember that was, that was so like, big. Like, that was on the radio. like this. What, Light On? No, 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 Time of My Life. That came on the radio. Like, my mind that, exploded. That was not on the radio in New York. That was on the radio in Alabama. <laughs> that was on the radio everywhere, Time of My Life. No, not here. Yeah, well, you were listening to the wrong station. I think I was listening to the right station. No, no, no. Uh, by the way, radio plays very heavily <laughs> into Joe Dirt. 
Does it? <laughs> Joe, Joe Dirt's story never would have gotten out without Dennis Miller's oh, the, radio, oh, radio show. show. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, like that's that. the best part of this, I think, is the radio concept. Wowzer. Okay, we're going to disagree there. Okay. Uh, budget of $17.7 million, and uh, this movie made $31 million. Wow. <laughs> All right. It's all right. Um, oh, I forgot to look up the box office for that year. I guess I'll do that right now. Hey. Um, Why? Don't you was... only do that with the top 10? If this made $30 well, million. No, no. I always say, like, it came in between this oh, and right, this. right, right, right. That's a thing I do, motherfucker. Well, you just didn't do it this week? Why? I feel like I'm very profane. I don't know. I I guess just I didn't care up. this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Joe Dirt, who gives a fuck? Yeah. There's only one nomination, Teen Choice Awards. It's the Teen, the teen. Choice Awards. <laughs> no, it's Kids Choice Awards. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's Teen, 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 Choice, Choice, Choice Awards. Uh, So Joe Dirt, let's find it here on the list. Boy, not great. <laughs> it's number 85. Okay. It made slightly less than Someone Like You with Hugh Jackman and Ashley Judd in Purple Underwear. Oh. And um, slightly more than The Musketeer, which is one of the many, many bad adaptations of The Three Musketeers. Yeah. Has there ever been a good one? Never. Will there it's ever a, be a good one? No, it's a bad story. Stop making it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Robin Hood and Three Musketeers are both shitty stories that they keep making and they need to just stop. Don't people like Men in Tights? Men in Tights? I mean, it's just a parody movie. Don't people like it, though? Dumb people. I mean, it's just it's nostalgia. If Didn't Crow have a Robin Hood? I don't believe that. It, yeah, that's a terrible movie Ridley too. Scott? By, Who directed by it? Ridley Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. But Men in Tights, man. If you didn't see that in theaters in 1995, I I can't see enjoying that movie. Yeah, I never seen it. Well, no, I've never seen the one with the fox. Whoa, that one's good. The fox is probably the best. How can one. you say that there's not a good one if that? No, one's good? you're right. There's zero good Three Musketeers adaptations, but there's actually like two pretty decent Robin Hood adaptations. Just like so many bad ones. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, the Fox one is good, and the one from the 30s is good. I should have had Jamie Foxx play the Fox. That well, it was the cool. 70s. I'm not even sure Jamie Foxx was born yet. Oh. Well, he probably was. He's old, right? I feel like yeah, Jamie Foxx is one of these dudes who's like 55 years old and like pretends to be 20. <laughs> you might yeah. be right. That, that's actually a good prediction. Yeah. Uh, let's look it up. How old is Jamie Foxx? Let's find that out right now. Siri? Oh, let's ask Siri. Hey, Siri. How old is Jamie Foxx? Did your series Jamie say something? Jamie Foxx is 54 years old. 54? I was one year off. That's the... crazy. Great Amazing. job. Amazing. All right. All right. So, oh, the Teen Choice Awards. It lost Best Comedy to Miss Congeniality. That was it. Wow. Just, yeah. And we'll cover right. that. Yeah. All right. Um. So, I guess let's get into it. Joe Dirt. It opens on Leonard Skinner's Sweet Home Alabama, Logan. Now, is that a song that's important to you? No, I hate that song. Go on. Why? It's a terrible song. No, it's not. It's a great song. No, it, that's annoying. Is it only annoying because you're from... Well, you're not from... You know, I learned today again that <laughs> he's not from Alabama. He just lives there. They, they're they from Houston, Texas. Yeah, which and that upset me because I've definitely told Daniel that... Um, at least twice before this moment, but <laughs> oh I, I guess this is the only time you remembered it. You were so nice when before when I when I <laughs> learned that, and now on the show you're calling me out. Well, I'm playing it up on the show. I was I'm yeah. a, I'm nice the whole time. Great. All right, Sweet Home Alabama, an incredible song by the great band Leonard Skinner. Yeah, R.I.P. Um, by the way, I didn't know that. <laughs> you didn't? I knew I knew they were probably dead. I didn't know they died so tragically. Yeah, yeah, it was a big plane crash. There's, that's probably the only good scene in Joe Dirt 2, Beautiful Loser. What, the Leonard Skinner scene? Yeah, that was that was easily my favorite scene in that entire you movie. You liked that? I couldn't wait to leave that. <laughs> oh, my God. No. I was like, I hope this is the rest of the movie. Oh, my God. Just follow Leonard Skinner around. Well, I And guess try to get them to not die in a plane crash. Wouldn't that be a better movie? I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Might yeah. as well try something else. All right. So Joe Dirt, we meet him. It's David Spade in a big mullet wig. And probably the funniest part of the wig is that they say 
that it's it is a wig and that he was born without the top of his skull <laughs> so they put a wig on him to protect his brain and uh and then like that sort of grafted with the top of his head and that's just his hair now i think that's one of the most creative jokes in the movie yeah i agree with you yeah (laughs) (laughs) i mean they should if they went into the studio and pitched that i would have said yes make joe dirt without hearing what they were going to do with it right and maybe that's what happened yeah maybe yeah i agree with you though when when that happened i was like all right that's pretty good (laughs) (laughs) all right so he's a, a janitor at a radio station. This was back when radio was still a thing. Now, now we just have podcasts. No, it still is. Remember Brew? <laughs> Brew. <laughs> yeah, dude, from uh, The Circle Season 4. Exactly. Yeah. America's I mean, th- favorite player, he won that award. What? America voted for their favorite player, and he won it. Is that true? Yes. He should not have won, though. I mean, he only he, mu- or, he must have Frank. He must have promoted it on his show. Right? I'm sure. Well, and he's like big on TikTok. He's like, I'm sure he just had the most fans, so that's why he won. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. I would have voted Yu Ling, maybe. I mean, that's like if like Liesel Welchel won, like yeah. <laughs> America's favorite player on Survivor Philippines. All right, we gotta get off this compies. Right. Well, there was no Malcolm on the circle. If there was, then he would have won. <laughs> you're, you're not wrong. All right. Uh, so, so he's in this radio station. It, it's a uh, I mean, it's funny because it's 2001 and radio still was a big deal. Like, I hate radio. I, I think they should outlaw radio. There should be no radio. <laughs> you don't like Stern? No, I mean, I like, I think satellite radio is cool. But but terrestrial radio, the, the amount of commercials you hear is out fucking rages. It, you, you hear two songs and then it's a commercial for like 10 minutes and then they pop back on. They do like rock blocks, but then they all have annoying DJs that like, talk obnoxiously and aimlessly before everything i i remember like last time i was in michigan when i had a girlfriend who was from michigan and and i heard it was just an anti-semitic joke on the radio what i i, I still remember the joke because it was so shocking it was um they were uh he was he was doing some stupid it was like after a song and he was like you know hey so uh Joey Ramone would have turned 73 today or something like that. And, and he goes, uh, hey, you, you know, the, the Ramones were Jewish because they love to say oi. Oi. Yeah. And uh, and so I, I I didn't know that was a thing. I well, you know how in punk they go, oi, oi, oi. Is that, but I didn't know that was a Jewish thing. Well, you know, us Jews, we like to say, oi, 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 you know. Really? What? Yeah. That's the Jewish thing. Oi, 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 can you fucking, oi, oh, my, my dick is small, and I, I love money. Give me money. Yeah. Yeah. Great joke. Yeah. Hilarious. Oi. Oi. So, um. So that endeared me to radio. But back in 2001, it was pretty popular and uh, and I'm sure much more offensive. And I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to come home every day from school and listen to Opie and Anthony. Wow. That's, that was your fun as a child. Yeah. I would play video games and I would like play NHL 2001 and listen to Opie and Anthony. I mean, those guys, like one of them's canceled now. Which one? I, I, I want to say... I want to say Opie. Yeah, he sounds like the one that would be canceled. Yeah, but I might be wrong about that. I might just be thinking that because he does sound like the one who would be canceled. Anyway, uh, it's been a long time since I listened to them, but they were popular for a second in New York. They used to have a thing. You'd see this, these stickers on every car on the fucking highway. They would have a thing called Whip Them Out Wednesdays, and the the sticker just said, Wow! In big yellow letters. And what you were supposed to do was when you're on the highway on Wednesday, just if you saw another person with that sticker, whip your tits out. No. Yup, that's a real thing. What a time to be alive. I know. Wow. Good Lord. All right. So in this movie, Dennis Miller is the host of the radio show. No. You familiar with Dennis Miller? No, I don't think so. Okay. I liked him in this movie, though. 
It's I pretty can't good. Believe, I can't believe he likes Dennis Miller in this movie. <laughs> I thought he was like a pretty good radio guy. Dennis Miller is one of just the shittiest examples of humanity ever. I fucking hate this guy. Okay. All right, and I used to like him in the late eighties. He was um, S- SNL's Weekend Update anchor. Okay, yeah, he was the know. guy, and um, he had a big mullet. And he would, he would give, eh, I'm going to do a, I got a snarky remark prepared. And at the end of it, I'm going to do a very specific reference. And the recognition of that reference is going to make you chuckle. All right. Hachi chachi. That's pretty all good. Right. Thank you. And then uh, what happened was he just never, ever updated his references. So all of his references just stayed in like the 60s and 70s, and he just kept being on TV. He had a show called Dennis Miller Live for a while, which was a talk show that became increasingly conservative over time until he was basically an open Republican. And then after 9-11, uh, campaigned for George W. Bush in support of the Iraq War. And... Um, <laughs> All right. He yeah. was also, uh, for a brief time in the late 90s, I believe, the anchor. He was the play by play guy for Monday Night Football. Wow. Yeah. Maybe that's why I liked him. He's got a good voice. And everyone hated him. He does have a good voice, but he, I, wrote a, I wrote one joke uh, down. It's from the second movie, just to explain why Dennis Miller isn't funny. I'm going to go through this joke with a fine tooth comb and explain why this is a bad joke. And why this is every Dennis Miller joke. Okay. Okay. You ready? So yes. the second movie opens with him just improvising. The, the second movie is 20 minutes longer than the first movie because it has endless scenes of improvisation. And it starts with him on that, you know, sitting on that chair in front of the gas station talking to those two right. dudes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, he's ripping on one of the dudes, calling him ugly, because most of the jokes in the second movie are just um, making fun of people for their appearances. And so uh, this redneck dude, he, he's he got like no teeth or whatever. And Dennis Miller looks at him and he goes, you look like Willie Stargell hit you with a bat. All right. Now, here's why that joke is bad. Um, a. Just think about the joke. Take away the reference and and update it with a modern reference and see if it would still be funny. No. Okay? So, uh, who, who's a big slugger? Albert Bryce Pujols. Harper. Sure. Bryce Harper. <laughs> you know, Giancarlo Stanton. Aaron Judge. Whatever. So, it's like, you look like Aaron Judge hit you with a bat. That's not funny. Yeah, who right? cares? Right. Yeah, because all you're saying is you look like you've been had the shit beat out of you. Yeah, right? great job. It doesn't make it funny because the reference is Willie Stargell. He really hits that Willie Stargell. You look like Willie Stargell hit you with a bat. Like he thinks that's the laugh moment of that sentence is that people are going to laugh in recognition of Willie Stargell. But this is a Joe Dirt film from the year 2017. And Willie Stargell played Major League Baseball with the Pittsburgh Pirates from 1962 to 1982 before dying the year Joe Dirt came out in 2001. Actually, two days before Joe Dirt came out. Okay? So that's the reference you're making. You look like Willie Stargell hit you with a bat. Yeah. So that, that's a that's a Dennis Miller original, that joke. That's a Dennis Miller original. And after that joke... I wanted to make Dennis Miller look like Daniel Ehrenberg hit him with a fucking bat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So that's Dennis Miller. Dennis Miller in this movie is an enormous radio personality. And he brings. Well, what even is it? It's like some rando like sees Joe Dirt. It's like Dennis Miller's producer sees Joe Dirt like sweeping up. And he's like, look at this guy. That mullet's funny. Let's bring him into the radio station. We've got nothing. Yeah, that's how it happens. I mean, I don't know how it actually happens. Like, how did Howard Stern discover Beetlejuice? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Did some? Do you think his producer, like Gary Delabate, saw? Is he him? still alive? Beetlejuice. Gary Delabate? No. <laughs> Wait, what? What do you ask, Beetlejuice? Be- yeah. 
I think he's dead. Didn't he make an appearance in um, Bubble Boy? I don't remember. I don't remember that. I think he's in that. Let's, I'm looking him up right now. Let's find out. Beetlejuice from Howard Stern. He's alive. That is wild. He's 54 years old. He was in Bubble same Boy. Same age as Jamie Foxx. <laughs> By the way, same age as Jamie Foxx. <laughs> That's wild. Do you think he's married? He, I don't want to guess. I don't know. It says that he went to school with Jerry O'Connell growing up. <laughs> okay. I wonder if he That's bullied wild. Jerry O'Connell for being fat. Oh my God! Can you imagine? <laughs> I can't juice. imagine. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Yeah, I love that Jerry O'Connell. Doesn't it make Jerry O'Connell likable that he was fat? Yes. Yes. Like if you saw Jerry O'Connell and he just looked like that his whole life, you'd fucking hate that guy. Maybe, but I like him because he was in Scream too. Didn't he get? He ended up getting Stamos's runoff, right? He hooked up with Rebecca Romaine after that. I didn't know about that. I believe so. Yeah, that's fine. I would take John Stamos's runoff. Oh fuck yeah! If it listen, if John Stamos was like, your job is to just <laughs> fuck every woman right after I fuck them, I'd say okay. Obviously, come on. Yeah. Um. All right. So. <laughs> So Joe hops on the radio with Dennis Miller and really uh, bring. He, he tells his story. He brings the heat, right? He brings the heat. Yeah, it's a it, this the film is a biopic basically of this fake uh, redneck guy, and he was left at the Grand Canyon by his parents and sister. Hey, we never find out what happened to the sister, huh? I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. because there's like a period in the movie where he's, he starts Presley. to think that Jamie Presley's his sister and he wants to fuck her and he's confused by that. Understandable. If you found out Jamie Presley was your sister, would you fuck her before telling no, her? No, I, I never got it with her. With her? Yeah, I don't know. I think I saw My Name is Earl when I was young and was like, oh, I don't really like her that much. And then that was it. J.B. Presley is so funny on My Name is Earl. She's such a funny little comedian. And and I was young. I, didn't, I just I'm, saw and she's, her. And she's sex on legs, bro. She's Poison Ivy 3, the new seduction. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Yeah. All right. Poison Ivy 3, the lineage of that series is Drew Barrymore into Alyssa Milano into J.B. Presley. Okay. Yeah, that's the Sex on Legs series. We got to cover it. Right. Um, and if you and if you don't find Drew Barrymore hot in that first movie, Sarah Gilbert watches a car for like ten minutes. I love Drew Barrymore. All right, well then you're, you'll be into it. Or as uh, Robert from Big Brother Four would say, Barry Drew Moore. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. Do you remember that scene? Oh, you won't know this, but in Poison Ivy, there's one scene where like Leonardo DiCaprio was just on set, probably trying to fuck Drew Barrymore, and you could just see him in one shot. He doesn't have any lines. Wow, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. Hope he succeeded. So that's, a, so that's a fun thing to look out for when you watch Actually, I hope movie. he didn't. Ugh, well, he did. I got news for you. He won an Oscar, and everyone was like, uh, about time! No, I mean, with Drew Barrymore. Oh, um, yeah, I hope he didn't either. He doesn't need that achievement. I mean, he gets everything. What, I would I would love it if she, he got turned down by by Drew Barrymore, but then she fucked Tom Green for years. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. Anyway, uh, dirt. Back to it. He was yeah. abandoned. He was abandoned at the Grand Canyon. By the way, I never asked that. I, I never answered that Jamie Presley question. And the answer is yes. Um, but uh, <laughs> she. she <laughs> he um. I mean, what even happens? He like finds himself living. He on meets his own. a girl that he likes. Yeah, but he's not. Is that when he's because at at first he's living on the outskirts of that one town, and that's kind of one of my favorite bits in the movie because it's weird that he's just like living on in the woods for years outside of a town he thinks looks nice. Yeah, wasn't that the second movie where he's on the island? I'm not talking about the island, bro. So when they do the same like a, thing. Yeah, they do the same thing. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, so he's he lives as a kid, like sort of as a wildebeest on the outside of this town. Right, Dewey and from Malcolm in the Middle. 
That's right. It is fucking Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle. That was mind blowing. Yeah, I love that kid. I couldn't believe Dewey was Joe Dirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me either. And then I looked up Dewey. Like, I hope that kid's all right. Was he? I'm no. I feel like no one from Malcolm in the Middle is working. Like Brian Cranston's the only one on that show with a career. Yeah, I don't remember Lois doing much either. Well, she's married to a major actor. Yeah, which one? There, there was like a back when Jane Kaczmarek used to get nominated for Malcolm in the Middle. I feel like she was not. Oh, I know Bradley Whitford. She's married to Bradley Whitford oh. from The West Wing, and they were always nominated every year, like both of them. And so it was like they were a real power couple at the time. They were like a real William H Macy and Felicity Huffman. All right, well, good for them. All right, um, so uh, Dirt does end up going into the town. And he meets a nice lady played by Brittany Daniel. You familiar with her? Yep. I know her from uh, Little Man. <laughs> Is she like, does she fuck one of them in Little Man? No, but she, he likes her though. She's like, he, uh, so the point of the thing of Little Man is like, he pretends to be a baby and like the people that he's staying with, they have friends and she's like one of the hot mom friends and he likes her. So, like, he's, uh, like, pretending to be a baby, but then he's, like, sucking on her boobs and stuff? Exactly. Great. Sounds like <laughs> you a good called movie. it. That's All right. Funny. So, so Brittany Daniel, I actually really like. She's, uh, she's a pretty capable comic actress, uh, and she's sort of been getting consistent work forever. Um, she was on Dawson's Creek back in the day. I just wanted to bring that up real quick. Uh, she played a real sex pot on that show. She was like, Dawson, do you want to fuck me? I'll take your virginity, Dawson. And Dawson was too much of a pussy to do anything about it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. And then she was on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. She's actually one of these actresses. When I see now, I kind of have to remind myself she doesn't have a penis because she's so... Um, she does she, in that show? Yeah. She really uh, convinces you on that show. What does that mean? Um, you know, she's she's good performance on It's Always Sunny. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right so um he's hanging out with her. She's got a kid rock. <sighs> yeah. By the way, I was right. I I remembered the dog's balls being stuck on the porch. I remember that classic moment. <laughs> you mentioned that last week? Yeah. I yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, he does. That's how they meet. It's a meet cute when Joe Dirt helps her dislodge her dog's balls from the porch yeah great um kid rock plays her the dude who wants to be her boyfriend i guess right it's so hard for me to watch this movie like joe dirt it's not bad it's like as good as any other shitty comedy from the era like my impulse is to give it to but especially after watching the second one especially after watching the second one but it's just you watch this first movie and there's so much Dennis Miller and there's so much Kid Rock. And it's like, how can I? This movie's a Republican. I can't enjoy this. And then when you're not hanging out with them, you're hanging out with Tyler Maine. Who is he in this movie? Oh, you don't remember Tyler Maine? He No. Uh, whenever he gets a job at like the oil rig, he like it's like the same thing from the second movie where he like wants to borrow their lunch and they pick on him. He's the guy that picks on him. The, yeah, that was Sabretooth. Yep, Sabretooth. How about that? Good for yeah. Sabretooth getting some work. Yeah, he also has a friend, Kicking Wing, who's a Native American. Oh, yeah. Who changes his name to Kicking Ass. Yeah, for no reason. He should not be in the second movie. That makes no sense. No. Well, I just think they asked everybody who was in the first movie to come back. But and in, they in the second movie, out. everything takes place in the past. But then Kicking Wing is like him catching up with him in the present. It makes no sense. There's a lot of stuff in that second movie that just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's one of them for sure. I mean, they they go back in time and meet Buffalo Bob in that second one, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> Who played him in the first one? I don't remember. Nobody I recognized, I guess. Really? Yeah. Fuck, I should have done more research. Brian Thompson from Cobra. Okay. Yeah. All right. That doesn't mean anything. Never to seen. You, but it's Cobra. okay. Well, you should. He's the main villain. I think it. I have Cobra. I've just never seen. No, that's Commando. I have Commando. Never oh seen my Commando. god, that's incredible too. I think Com- of all like the non-franchise 
like star vehicles of the 80s for those guys. I think Commando's the best Schwarzenegger and Cobra is the best Stallone. Not over the top? No, nah, that's great too, but I, I'm a Cobra guy. Big Cobra guy. All right, that's good to know. Oh, I got some more Space Coke today. <laughs> oh, yeah? All right. Yeah, <laughs> really enjoying it. Um, So at one point, a meteorite comes... And he takes it and he thinks he's going to make a lot of money from it. But it turns out that it's just a frozen piece of shit from an airplane lavatory. Yeah. Classic. Did you enjoy that? There's a lot of that kind of shit in this movie. There's just shit and farts. There's good cow farts. There's the dog testicles. At one point, he... um, The dogs hump him a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Remember, he finds like a missile. It, yeah, he that's finds another a poop nuclear thing. bomb in the desert with Adam Beach, the you know, fucking kicking ass or whatever. And then he goes into a bank and tries to rob the bank with a nuclear missile. But then the top of the nuclear missile comes off, and it's just a bunch of shit. I don't think he's robbing a bank. I think he's like, give me all the names of the people that were at the Grand Canyon. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's trying to find his parents. That's the whole plot of this movie. I forgot. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, and and after that, he says the line, I got the poo on me, which is a thing that people said when I was a kid. Why? I don't know, but that line, that line popped after this movie. People would say that. Oh, my God. (laughs) All right, he finally finds his parents by going on TRL. Yeah, Carson Daly. Could you believe it? You know, and when I did the Teen Choice Awards, by the way, the, um, the research... I saw that Carson won the best talk show host of the year. Well, was this his peak? Right. To, no, probably The Voice, right? No, I would say his his peak was probably like 1999. Like Whoa. right when, when 1999-2000, when NSYNC and Backstreet were first coming up, he was fucking Jennifer Love Hewitt. Oh, that's his peak. I, I didn't know he was around that back then. That's his peak, baby. Yeah, he was on TRL. He came out of nowhere. He got his start. He was fucking Jimmy Kimmel's sidekick on the radio. Did you know that? No. He's like, uh, he was just Sal this, like, those guys? he was like some loser in the radio that, like, you know, Jimmy Kimmel would call gay. And then he, he ended up hosting TRL. He would wear black nail polish. And lots of necklaces and bl- bracelets, and <laughs> he would I really didn't know show. he was around back then. That was his thing, man. The voice was like the next act for Carson Daly. Well, okay, okay. So, um, so Carson helps him find his parents, and uh, then he goes to see them. It's Fred Ward, and yeah, some- crazy. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of that dude. R.I.P. He died like two weeks ago. Yeah. And it's Carolyn Aaron playing the mom from um, Edward Scissorhands. And uh, I read that for for months, that was supposed to be Roseanne. Yeah. They were going to have Roseanne play Joe Dirt's mom. And she just like kept canceling on them and postponing. And, and, they, and eventually they were just like, fuck her, Jesus. Yeah, this is scene. like a two minute scene. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it would have been fun, I guess, but who cares? Yeah, who cares? Um, so it turns out that they just want to use Joe to promote their ceramics or something. They want to be famous. Yeah. And, uh, and Joe's not into it. Oh, and there's the whole thing where Brittany Daniel found out first and didn't want to tell him. So everyone thinks she's an asshole, but then it turns out she just didn't want to tell him to not hurt him. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. What are you going to do? It's an ex- it's an insanely episodic movie. Do you want to are there any episodes that you really enjoyed that you want to discuss? Um I like when they played Dave Matthews Crash. That was good. Oh yeah, and that was not a joke. Like that was during a part of the movie where he was like feeling earnest. Yeah, that was something. like the, he was like pretty down. <laughs> yeah, so they played Crash into me. I love and I'll song. come into here. No, no, they fade to black before he says that part. We don't oh. get to that part. Shit, shit. In a boy's dream. Yeah, we're not there yet either. <laughs> Wait, here, here, here. You want to hear my, my real Dave Matthews impression? Yes. All right, you ready? Hike up your skirt a little more 
and show your world to me. <laughs> How's that? That's great. Thanks, bro. All right. By world in that sentence, he met he met her. P- yes. Yeah. That's when correct. in that in that beautiful love song when he says hike up your skirt a little more, show your world to me, he's talking about her sweet little p- baby. <laughs> yeah, I like the song. <laughs> Great. My mom does too. My mom had that album. Really? Yeah. Um. Yeah. He. <laughs> I remember he was at Woodstock '99 wearing pajama pants. Really? <laughs> he wore pajama pants. Yeah. He wore pajama pants out on the stage and then he was just like so nice. He was like, Hey everybody, don't be so angry. Put your boobs away. Let's all have a nice time. Show your world to me. That he Show goes your that. world. I don't want to see your boobs. I want to see your world. <laughs> we didn't talk about Christopher Walken, did we? No, I guess not. How did he show up? He's having fun. I, don't remember. I feel like they just let him deliver the lines however he wanted to. <laughs> Oh, he is another janitor. He hires Joe Dirt when Joe Dirt goes to Louisiana. But then he's like from New York and he's like involved with the mob. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I liked the stuff with him pretending not to be from New York. Yeah, no, that's funny because his voice is so obviously insane. Yeah. That that he's not from Louisiana. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, and then, right, and then Joe gives him credit on TV and then a mob hit happens. Bobby from uh, The Sopranos. Yeah, that's right. Can you believe fucking Bobby Bacala was in this movie? Yeah, that was nuts. That and was mind blowing. In the second movie, they straight up do the intro from The Sopranos. Could you believe they did that shit? <laughs> I could it's, not. It is 2015, guys. The Sopranos. <laughs> I mean, it would have made sense in the first one. Like, The Sopranos was like a new hot show in 2001. Yeah. It was like in season three. Why do it years after it's canceled? It worked for me, though. Well, you just, I mean, that movie's so bad that I guess you hear that song and you're like, well, this is fun at least. Yeah, it was interesting. I was like, they're really doing this. All right. Yeah. Um, Let's see. He hang out, He hangs out with Eddie Money, so he gets a little cameo. Yeah. Sure. Rosanna Arquette showed up for a second. I got excited about that. Third best Arquette. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I, you know what? Let me amend that. Second best Arquette. Who's first? Patricia. Wow. I disagree. Well, you're going to say David's number two, and I understand why, because of Scream. But if you look past Scream, and then you look at Rosanna's credits, Rosanna was in fucking Pulp Fiction. And Isn't he in a wrestling hours. thing? Uh, Well, he was the WCW champion. No, he's like in a wrestling thing, right? Ready to Rumble. Yeah, yeah. And in the promotion for Ready to Rumble, he became the WCW champion. No, I didn't know that. Well, how dare you? He's the only non-wrestler ever to hold a world championship. No, wasn't there a little kid? How, that was a tag team championship. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm All sorry. right. Yeah. And he held it with Braun Strowman. Yeah, you're right. All right, anyway. I love Braun Strowman. Why do you say it like that? Mm. He's a great Royal Rumbler. I know. He's he's sort of gone off the deep end. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Mm. He started a new wrestling promotion called Control Your Narrative. <laughs> Well, didn't it's know about very that. weird. Yeah. Anyway, um, and most of the people that are signed to it are MAGA people, so that concerns me. Yeah. Anyway, um, fucking Joe Dirt, what do you give it? Two stars. Yeah, it's a two. It's a two. But I have to say something about this movie. It made me laugh a bunch. And I was thinking about movies today that I give a lot of rope to. Movies that like I gave good reviews to from recent years. Comedies, you know? And, you know... Better or worse than Booksmart? Like, this movie made me laugh much more than Booksmart. You know? So, like, you you can say that they're making better comedies than this now. Like, I I won't argue with you that Booksmart isn't a better movie. Or or even some of the ones, like, I Want You Back, which just came out recently, I thought was really charming. Or, um... Game Night, which came out a couple years ago or something like that. Tag? Yeah, I I mean, I don't like that one as much, but sure, that's a decent option. I just think I'm watching Joe Dirt. What's the Rogan Charlie Theron movie? What was that called? That was good. Long Shot. Long Long Shot. shot. That was special. I think Long Shot was a little more special than some of those. But of all those movies, those mainstream comedy movies, like I got to say, I laughed harder at Joe Dirt. So... I have this weird theory now where I think bad bad comedies from 20 years ago are funnier than good comedies right now. 
What about Hubie like, Halloween? Get- That's funny. Well, that I think Hubie is like sort of it's got an old soul. <laughs> it's got you're right. Yeah, you're yeah. You're right about that. That's a good. Yeah. That's a good point. I don't know. It's it's. I didn't laugh a, that much in this. I don't. I don't recall. It's a weird time, man. Like I'm not gonna sit here and argue that Joe Dirt's a better movie than Game Night. It's absolutely fucking not. No. But I think it's funnier. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I will not be saying that about the sequel. No. Let's Did you like his it. dreadlocks at the end of the first movie? Um, yeah, sort of. It was a good joke. What? <laughs> yeah. All right. Who's your MVP? Oh, right, right. I forgot we do that. Um, this is tough. I guess Christopher Walken. I guess I'll go. No. What does he do enough? No, I'll go Christopher Walken. It's it's funny. The mob stuff. All right. He's going with Christopher Walken. You gonna um, go Maine now that you know Tyler Maine's in the movie? No, you know I'm gonna go with that girl, Brittany Daniel. I think she's really good. Yeah, she is. And it's she such a good. thankless role. She's just asked to be like hot and sweet. And like she makes you like her and she's pretty funny and whatever. She I think she's job. better in the second movie. Maybe uh, she's not better in the second movie. Maybe everyone else is just worse in the second movie. Yeah, I, th- I think she just outclasses a lot of the people in the second movie. Yeah. Um, And my LVP. Mine's Kid Rock. Yeah, that's understandable. For me, it's Dennis Miller. He's just in more of it. Yes, but I think he does what he's supposed to do as like a radio host. But I think Kid Rock does what he's supposed to do. Like the most offensive thing about Kid Rock in this movie is that he's Kid Rock. It's like I'm looking at Kid Rock and that's offensive to me. Okay. Well, I didn't know but, Dennis Miller, so I guess yeah, that makes yeah, sense. yeah. If I knew but him, the, I'd feel but the same. actual performance Kid Rock is giving is just like a forgettable thing. Like if he wasn't Kid Rock, you would not even for- remember this character was in the movie. But like yeah. the Dennis Mill, Dennis Miller, I think is actively shitty and annoying i didn't find him that annoying well i know yeah all right so he's my lvp kid rocks yours i'm not gonna argue let's get into joe dirt 2 colon beautiful loser which what do you think now looking what do you think of the title now it doesn't make sense does it i think it does why i think it's a celebration of loserdom is he beautiful I think I think he is beautiful. Oh, is it like on the inside? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Whatever. He's a family man. Well, uh, so Spade, let's talk about the process of getting this movie made. They wanted to do a sequel to Joe Dirt. Like, they weren't quiet about it. Spade would talk about it in, inter- in interviews and stuff. Yeah. And... They almost got a TV show made. TBS actually went through the development process of a Joe Dirt animated series in 2010. Okay. And this was right around the same time that Fox put out an animated version of Napoleon Dynamite. Okay. And I feel like nobody watched that. And then TBS saw that and was like, I guess we won't make Joe Dirt. (laughs) Like, no one's going to watch that either. Yeah. I didn't watch it. Um, Yeah. So that never got made. And then a couple years later, Crackle reaches out to um, to David Spade. What had happened was Sony bought Crackle. Crackle started as like an independent thing. And then Sony bought it and started like uploading all their movies and TV shows on it. That's why they have like they had Seinfeld back in the day and shit. And so um, they. uh they ask Spade if he could bring in a sequel for cheap because Sony has started to notice that when Joe Dirt airs on television, it does weirdly well and it trends on social media. Oh my God. Yeah. And so they're like, maybe people like Joe Dirt. But I really think it's just a thing. Like people were talking about Joe Dirt on on, on uh, social media because it's a really stupid movie. It's sort of like um, Morbius. It's and it's Sony again, isn't it? Was that was what you're gonna so- say. And it's yeah, I was gonna bring up Morbius. This, Sony just anytime anyone's talking about their shit on social media, they get excited and they're like, do they like our movies? Right. Yeah, that's funny. But they don't. No. They they brought they put Morbius back in theaters. It made eighty five thousand. They're the least self aware people ever. Sony. They're the least self aware company ever. And it's be- 
And I think it's because they started as a Japanese company and they were willfully ignorant of America. Like Sony for a while there just like refused to learn American entertainment. And they were just like, we're a famous company. We're huge. We'll get into America. They hired this dude, John Peters and and, P- and his partner, Peter Goober, to run Sony. They were like the first heads of Sony and they ran it into the ground instantly. Like they made Last Action Hero and shit and it tanked. Yeah. Um, and then like i feel like sony's been playing catch up ever since and now sony is just like they are a company that has now been around for like 40 years making movies and like the only movie they've ever made that people like is fucking spider-man <laughs> and they're just living on that yeah and people only like half of those people only like two of them <laughs> yeah you're right i mean they they eventually had to go to disney and say can you please make a good spider-man movie for us yeah <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> All right. So anyway, Sony they did has make the crackle. PlayStation. Got to give them that. Yeah, they're a great electronics company. I agree. They've made many wonderful stereos and televisions and uh, and video game consoles. Right. Yeah. Okay. So they asked Spade if the, he could make a sequel for Crackle, but they're like, um, the first one. May it will cost seventeen point seven million dollars, and we can basically give you five dollars. <sighs> can you make it for five dollars? And David Spade was like, "No, I can't make it for five. <laughs> and they're like, "Well, what can you make it for?" He's like, "How about five million dollars?" And they're like, "How about three point seven And he's like, "All right, so he t- if they were <laughs> making this for cheap, why do they have to get Christopher Walken back?" I don't think they had to, dude. I really think they just reached out to everyone that was in the first movie and waited to see who said yes before writing the script. Well, yeah, they definitely did that. But I'm just like, as a as somebody who would be trying to save money, seems pointless. Well, maybe they didn't pay him. Maybe walking out a fun time doing the first one. Who knows? That'd be cool. I did see. Yeah, some of these older guys they get they get excited that people are like recognizing them for new shit. Like I read Dennis Miller say that he's never seen the first Joe Dirt movie, but that it gets him street cred with his kids' friends. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what fucking kids in, like, 2020 are seeing Joe Dirt. Yeah, and if my kids' friends are big Joe Dirt fans, I'm not going to let my kid be friends with them anymore. That's a good point. If your kid's hanging out with a bunch of Joe Dirt nerds, get rid of <laughs> Yeah, them. come on. What are you doing? Uh, all right, so... um. Spade, he writes the movie with Fred Wolf, and Fred Wolf is now a director, having done like the House Bunny and shit. So he decides he's going to direct it, um, and it premiered on Crackle on July sixteenth, twenty fifteen. I kind of remember when it came out. Like there was something about it that I was like, "You should watch that." What? Yeah. Like, my brain, I feel like, wanted me to watch Joe Dirt 2, Beautiful Loser. But my heart wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, I think it was just sort of like. Were you going to skip even, the first one? I'd, I'd seen it. Oh, you you had seen the first one. I think you oh, made- yeah, yeah. I didn't see the first one in theaters, but I saw it, like, right when it came out on video. Or oh, whatever. okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, it, there was just. I'd seen the first one. I'm a completist. I, I I support David. I always want David Spade to do well, even when I'm not enjoying his shit. You know what I mean? Sure. Like when Rules of Engagement was on the air, I was like, I'm happy he's on a TV show. Yeah, sure. I'm not going to watch the fucking thing, but I'm happy about that. And you watch everything. So yeah. that's pretty sad. I tried to watch it. I watched the first couple episodes of Rules of Engagement. It was fucking impossible. Okay. By the way, you know who the star of Rules of Engagement is? Him, fucking putty him. putty from seinfeld and he's all over this movie yeah he yeah, is i guess they're best friends now yeah what's his name i'm drawing a blank on that guy's name patrick warburton, warburton. yeah 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 i love that guy one of the best voices ever probably not a hot take oh. but i love his voice no of course yeah he's the tick it was he i didn't know that he was the live action tick yeah oh. in the late 90s what? oh the, okay well P- peter serafinowitz was the other live action tick yeah, not as good. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, not bad. It's fine. Anyway. Joe Dirt 2. I'm so demoralized right now. 
No, no, we're I fine. like I like hit a, I hit a wall. I feel like I've been talking too much. Can you can you say something? Yeah, well, uh, we got a Northwest <laughs> reference in this movie. They reference Kanye and <laughs> Northwest. The only modern. It's the only modern reference in the entire movie. Yeah, it was very weird. I have a question. When you have triplets, is that no, is that is that normal where two look the same and one doesn't? I really don't uh, know. This. I don't that, know why you're asking me this. I don't know. I'm. I don't know if you, I'm not an OBGYN. Well, I and I don't have children. You probably know this. You can't. I mean, I'm. I'm definitely smarter than you, Logan. Right. But on most subjects, I'm stupid. Well, you have <laughs> twin nieces. Maybe. Maybe you would know a little something. I guess I never thought about what it would be like if there was a third of those. Little <laughs> yeah. Would it look like them, or would it look very different? I'm just wondering how uh, often that happens. Um, Are your twin nieces, do they look the same? Yeah, they're identical. Okay, that's cool. I can tell them apart, but like you wouldn't be able to like first meeting them. You don't know that. I, can, I could always tell the Olsen twins apart, even when I, I was a mean, kid. I didn't mean you specifically. Of course, the second I... I mean... <laughs> <laughs> so I implied that Logan wouldn't be able to do something. He immediately defended himself. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't come at me like that. I didn't. Jesus, Mark McGrath right. is also in this movie. He plays the Kid Rock role. Really, let's be honest. Yeah. Do you think this role was originally offered to Kid Rock? Why would he turn it down? I think Kid Rock probably is like, you know, thinks David Spade's a libtard now or something. Oh, he, he, it's twenty fifteen. He's so off the deep He's prepping end, man. for the election. Yeah, yeah, you might be right. But uh, yeah, so he didn't come back for this. After, by the way, I read for years, he pitched a sequel to David Spade. Like, Kid Rock, for a while, was the only one trying to get this made, and then he didn't show up for it. I don't think they offered it to him then. Maybe not. Maybe they just, like, didn't want the hassle of Kid Rock. Yeah, I don't think so. But I also just feel like, I don't know why they would write this Mark McGrath character in. Well, I think they knew that one day he would get fourth place on Celebrity Big Brother, and they were like, oh, we got to get him now while he's hot. Yeah, I, I knew that would come up. So, of course, Mark... <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's talk about it. Mark McGrath is in this movie, and he's not an actor, so that's weird, <laughs> but he's the lead singer of Sugar Ray. Yeah. Now, Sugar Ray was a fledgling metal band. Yeah. Would you say metal? Midnight. They were metal. And then in the mid '90s, they recorded one song called "Fly" in an attempt to hit the mainstream, <laughs> and it worked. And so then, after that, they they just put out all albums where every song sounded like a variation on "Fly." Yeah, so you don't like them? I'm, I'm no, I, I mean Sugar Ray. They were great at the time. Like Sugar Ray was one of those bands I was never gonna buy an album, but like every four months they'd come out with like a single, and I'd be like, "That's a good song." <laughs> every was it every, every morning, morning there's yeah. a halo hanging from the corner of my girlfriend's footballs. shut the door baby don't say a word yeah classic that was dj homicide now i did have a friend who, i think his name was dj homicide he, they, i had a friend who owned the first sugar ray album okay and if you opened that up and, and this was very shocking because we were children okay when you open up the CD booklet, on the inside cover, DJ Homicide was giving you the finger. Yeah, that's his name. I looked it up. It is? I've got that right? Yep, DJ Homicide. All right, so he's giving you the finger, and I was like, wow, they're intense, all right? <laughs> Not all their stuff is going to sound like Fly, and I was right, okay? But then on the next album, it did. Yeah. Anyway, so they're great, and... <laughs> Then he sort of became an actor. This is the only, I think, the second thing I've ever seen him in. He played um, Ian Ziering's brother in the Sharknado. <laughs> Whoa, I had no idea about that. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. I really enjoyed that. Uh, maybe best friend, but I think brother. Well. Anyway. Um, so that was, I mean, I don't know if that was before or after this, but here he is in this movie trying to fuck Brittany Daniel. Well, I know that the fourth one comes out after 2015 because that is called The Fourth Awakens. Oh, that's right. So it depends if he comes in in the third movie or not. You know, I never watched the last one. Are there four I, or I five? Saw, there's six. Six! And I, yes, and I saw all five, and then I never watched the last one. That's crazy. Yeah, I should just watch it. No, we'll do it one day. Don't watch it yet. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah. Should I save it? Yes. All right. I will. Yeah. All right. So 
Joe Dirt at the start of this movie has children, which is a bummer because you're like, oh, I don't want Joe Dirt to raise children. <laughs> well, at least they have Brittany Daniel. All right. Yeah. And she, he's like working sort of as a logger. I can, guess. can I say, by the way, how great she looks in this movie? Like this is 14 years later and she's not like a huge actress, but she like looks great. She's I I've always thought. Like Brittany Daniel has frequently in her career just been cast to be like the hot lady and stuff. And I understand why. She's very fucking hot. Yeah. But like I think she's a really capable comedian. Like I've always been impressed by that movie Club Dread. Have you ever seen that? No. Okay, so Club Dread was um the broken lizard comedy troops follow up to Super Troopers. And I actually thought it was a better movie than Super Troopers. It's like this sort of whodunit comedy where like people are getting picked off by a serial killer on like in like a beach resort. Okay. Okay. And uh, what they did in that movie that's really smart is like all of the main actresses they got are both hot and funny. And you wouldn't think that would be so hard to do, but you never see that combination. Who else? Alison Brie. That'd be a good one. No, this is like before Brie's time. Club Dread was like 2004. Four, I want to say. Oh, okay. Um, here I'm looking it up. I mean, I've never even heard of some of these other ladies. Jordan Ladd, but I guess I liked her at the time because I remember liking her. Lindsay Price, she's another good one. She's hot and funny. Okay. Yeah, you'd know her if you saw her. But anyway, that movie's like all right. If you're looking for like a all right, Club Dread. Yeah. Bill Paxton's in it. Really funny. Okay. Anyway. So. Uh. He's he's a logger. That's what I was getting into. I wanted to bring up the scene where everybody farts on him. Yeah. Do you have to? Yeah. Yeah. I do. He's sitting there and men keep just getting up. Not only fart. men, a woman. Well, I was getting there. Oh, I'm sorry. Getting, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, send that up. Uh yeah, so men are farting on him and then they bring in a hot lady with denim shorts so that her butt's real hot you know and then she starts farting on him and that's a very funny joke yeah i was on the floor laughing couldn't stop well i've never seen a hot lady fart before no no i see them fart all the time women fart constantly i I gotta be honest with you every single woman i have ever dated has farted in front of me more than i've farted in front of her really yeah especially the ones i've lived with women are disgusting that's all i'm trying to say okay that's fair all right. Men, the stereotype is that men are disgusting. But what I'm here to tell you is that women are just as disgusting. They fart. They shit. I mean, they have to pee right after they have sex so they don't get an infection. Are you crazy? Yeah. How, how <laughs> gross is that? How gross is that? They have periods. Yeah. I don't have that. Yeah. Come on. Men rule, but girls drool is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but guys are probably worse people. Let's say that. Oh, 100%. 100%. Well, everyone's shitty people. That That's the thing. I really don't think gender has anything to do with it. I just think that only 1% of people is good. Are you part of that 1%? I try to be. I make an effort to be. I don't think I succeed, but I try to be. Yeah, well, that's, that's all you can do. Yeah, I, I agree. That's better than so many people. That's better than... Literally, so fucking many people. Yeah, and you don't. Yeah, you you really realize that. Yeah, I mean, I really think the world's meaner now because of Trump and the pandemic back to back. Like, I, I yeah. think Trump and the pandemic back to back. Like, we always suspected that people were shitty, but now we have like proof that most people are shitty, and most people are way shittier than we thought. <laughs> yeah, so I, I can't fight you on that. It's a bummer. The world's hard right now. Yeah, definitely. it's hard to trust anybody. Okay. Um. Oh, hey, Mark McGrath had a funny scene. Did he really? No, he did. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. I I laughed twice in this movie. Okay. And I will tell you the times when he put well, his penis in the popcorn. Yeah. So one time was when, the when he met Leonard Skinner. All right. There's a tornado. That. Oh, let me go back. So so basically the plot of the movie is his kids see him getting farted on by all those people 
And so they're like, maybe our dad's a loser. <laughs> Which they're right. I mean, they had to find out eventually. Um, so, but also, why is he like working? Like, I feel like he'd be famous now from that. But I guess it was just like a local radio show. Dennis Miller. Who gives a shit? Anyway. No, but then he was on Carson Daly. He was famous. You're right. He was on fucking TRL. That's what how he met his guy? parents because they saw him on TV. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That's actually I feel like point. he should be a VJ now. He could be like the new Jesse Camp, Joe Dirt. Or he could be like selling cameos, right? Wow. This is before <laughs> that. You got to understand. Oh, you're, you're living right. in the now, bro. Damn. Joe Dirt can't start an OnlyFans. OnlyFans <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he and Brittany Daniel could do some business for some FYI, Brittany, Brittany Daniel would fucking... Either this character or Brittany Daniel herself yeah, would probably right. stop the internet on fucking. Only. I would if Brittany Daniel was on OnlyFans. I would I would subscribe. Thirty bucks a month? Would you? No, no, no. That's too much. I, I can't do that shit. I, I I don't think I'd subscribe to to one for over ten. Not even Brittany Daniel. Not even if it was like a famous person. Maybe for like one. No, it would leak eventually. It would leak eventually. Oh, you're absolutely right. Go on yeah. Reddit. Yeah, I. I I don't even need to go. Hey, go on this. Uh, there's this website, thepornedude.com, <laughs> right? And he's got links to all the sites that have the fappening and <laughs> fucking. <laughs> yeah. If you want to see a celebrity sucking a dick or <laughs> with her shirt off or a dude with his dick out and yeah. you've never seen it before, check online. You might find something. Yeah. Anyone you can imagine, it might be there. I literally this week came. <laughs> yeah, I came across a picture of Am- Amanda Seyfried sucking her boyfriend's dick. Oh yeah, I've seen that on a kayak. I've I've never seen that. Right on a boat. Yeah, on a boat. Yeah, I've seen that. How is that just available for me to look at? That was on Twitter for a long time. There That's was like outrageous. a week where that was on Twitter. People were just talking about it. Yeah. Well, I missed it and. It was yeah. good. And then there's another one where he, she's just holding it. I almost yeah. preferred that one. It's so casual. <laughs> yeah. She's anyway. great. She's a great actress, too. Hey, yeah, the dropout I mean. fucking fantastic, by the way. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So the tornado, a tornado comes over their trailer or whatever, and it sends Joe Dirt back in time. Okay. Yeah, powerful. So, very powerful and at first i didn't know he was like, it took me a while to figure out that he was back in time i guess mostly like so you, most movies they'd see like a newspaper or something it took me a while to figure it out in this one it was it really wasn't until he ran into like buffalo bob from the first one like he so in the first one there's like a fake serial killer it's a silence of the lambs reference even though it, the movie came out 10 years after silence of the lambs and um they uh in the in this one he runs into like a young guy and that guy says i'm buffalo bob and so i was confused at first i thought he was running into buffalo bob's son or, or like <laughs> I don't, something uh, but no it was young buffalo bob from like the 60s or something right and he, and he runs into a guy trying to do a shrimp business because it's like a forrest gump thing also yeah yeah he's like a fake bubba right um yeah so he i mean his whole gambit is he's gonna buy comic books who cares then- let's get to the the popcorn thing you thought that was funny <laughs> <laughs> well let me talk about leonard skinner first oh yeah sorry these are the two good scenes in the movie all right <laughs> first scene he sees a band at a bar and they're just like a average like surf rock kind of band and then he talks to them or how does it turn out he sees like their name or something but they're not named leonard skinner no but he sees like van zandt or whatever oh that's right yeah yeah yeah. it says van zandt on the poster and so he pulls them aside after the show and he tells them how much potential they have and shit and he basically like teaches them the word free bird like you know it would be a good song it starts like it's really funny, and uh, and and the guitarist seems to like. Oh yeah, that's a good idea, and he's doing it. It's really good. I I thought that scene was super funny, and then 
he remembers that they died in a plane crash and they're talking about how oh man when we get rich and famous we'll all get pilot licenses and shit it's funny i like that yeah no it's okay but then you're just like sad that you're watching joe dirt 2 and now you're watching the origins of leonard skinner and you could be doing anything else right now yeah but i'm okay with the art i like leonard skinner do you really I yeah really about you. I, i've got news for you nathaniel and i were in a band briefly in high school called the superlatives yeah um we eventually split off from that band and formed our own band together but that in that band he was the rhythm guitarist and i was the drummer and um we did a talent show at our high school and we performed the song tuesday's gone by leonard skinner okay i'm sure you brought the house down i did i fucking tore it up on the drum set playing that song baby all right it was an incredibly successful night i also uh sung a song with the other guitarists from that band we had two performances no big deal wow look at you an encore yeah i didn't know by the way that they're leonard skinner after their gym teacher i didn't either they did get really specific with it the scene went on forever (laughs) we'll say that that yeah it was like eight minutes it was kind of like just an snl sketch in the middle of the movie that could have been good as an snl sketch it would have been good yeah yeah that's a good idea do you think he wrote it as an SNL sketch and just like had it locked and loaded all these years? No, because this is Joe Dirt specific, right? Leonard Skinner. I mean, it fits in a Joe Dirt movie for sure. Yeah, I think this is a Joe Dirt original. A Joe Dirt original. All right. And then, yeah, the other scene I thought was funny <laughs> was they're at the drive in and Mark McGrath decides he's going to do the thing. <laughs> The classic thing. The classic. We thing. all know the move. Have you ever done it? Of course. Yeah, we all have. No, of course not. <laughs> no, I know me neither. You cut a hole at the bottom of the popcorn, right? Right. You stick your dick through. Here's the thing about this move. Mm-hmm. Your dick's got to be hard the whole time, right? Right. You can't plug up a hole with a limp dick. Or you can, but then when it gets bigger, it just rips the bag more. Well, no, it would go up through the popcorn, I would think. But it would still expand girthwise. Yeah, but I don't think it would be wider than the bag. No, but if you say you make the hole small for a flaccid... Oh, I see. You think it would rip the hole a bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's a good point. I think you've got to be hard already. Then yes. you stick it through and you've got to stay hard. And that's tough, man. Yeah, especially if you're just like waiting. Yeah, you don't know when someone's going to touch the thing. And wouldn't it be uncomfortable? You'd get, like, infection. Like, especially if it's buttered popcorn. But there's already salt on it. You're just getting salt in, like, the fucking urethra of your dick. Yeah, that's not how... Yeah, you're right. (laughs) You're right. right. Yeah, so anyway, what ends up happening in in this movie is that his entire family (laughs) sidles up next to the car he's sitting in. And it's like, oh, you got some popcorn there? Let's try some popcorn. And and it's very funny, them reaching <laughs> in and touching his dick. The only problem with the scene is he comes at the end. They did not mean need to make him fucking I come. agree. I agree. That's that's too much. That's that so stupid. It. But yeah. up until then, I thought it was a pretty good bit. Yeah, I didn't find it that funny. I thought it was crazy, <laughs> by the way. He shows up to a drive-in in a convertible. That seems like the wrong move. I feel like you're going to a drive-in. You want to be not in a convertible. You're right. You pull that hood up and get busy. Yeah, exactly. Convertible seems crazy. Yeah, unless you sit in the the very back, I guess. What what's the difference with that? Well, and everyone's looking forward at the screen. You can oh, you, you, you have room to get down. I thought you down. mean the back seat of your car. Oh right. no, 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 the back of the the driving crowd. Right. Mm-hmm. Although I I the back of the driving crowd's probably right there at the concession stand, bro. Yeah, yeah. Get a fucking hood, McGrath. Yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. Oh, um. So the movie, it's kind of a, a thing where Joe Dirt's in the past. And he's there for like years, too. Yeah, he's like in the like, 60s and then he's in he the 70s. He goes in a coma at one point, doesn't he? And then he wakes up like 10 years later. He wakes up in a hospital at one point. Like his balls are in his stomach. That scene sucked. Oh, yeah. That drove me nuts. I hated yeah. that. Is that a I don't joke? Like any- nuts? No. I don't like anything with stuck nuts. Like the dog thing in the first one, at least it's a dog, you know. This one just seemed like uh 
like a poor man's version of the getting the nuts stuck in the zipper and there's something about Mary. Yeah, this and this was not funny. And it like went into another scene where he's on the, the plane and they get stuck in the toilet. Oh, yeah, and I hated that, too. It's like 15 minutes long. Oh, yeah, there's so much, like, nut suction in these movies. Like, testicles getting suctioned into and then, and then we get again where Mark McGrath just, like, rips the dog's balls off. We have to get that scene again, but this time, like, worse. Well, it's because it's revisiting. But again, wouldn't it make more sense to have Kid Rock in that scene? Would it? I think so, because he, like, knew the dog from the past. Well, now I guess the past, the, the present's all crazy. Oh, but that was a back. dead, was it a dead dog? <laughs> Didn't the dog die in the first one? Oh, yes. The, the, yeah, you're right, because the dad, t- the d- okay, so the dad takes the dog on a hunting trip, and he get, he lands on like a train I love that leg scene. Cut off. By the way, that scene's very funny. I agree with you. Yeah, that scene is funny. And then he comes back and shoots the dog, because the dog didn't hit save him. Right, he get, he gets his leg caught in the railroad track, and he's like, "Go home, boy. Get get some help. Get some help." And then just because he's a dog, the dog just like runs home. <laughs> well, the dog humps another dog, and then they have a baby, and then that dog is the new dog. Oh, I think. Right. I think that's what happened. <laughs> he gets distracted humping a dog. Lots of, of dog humping. Well, know, that's weird. Joe Dirt, man. I mean, this is just comedy back then. We just wanted to see fucking and cum and shit. We were yeah. obsessed with that stuff. We were disgusting in the late nineties. Yeah, really. And this is twenty fifteen though. Incest. There was so much incest back then too. Like in the first movie, he thinks he's gonna fuck Jamie Presley, and he does anyway, still thinking it's his sister before finding out it's well. Not, not. just that. It's like when he thinks she's not, he can't. Even, he's not even attracted to her anymore. He's only attracted to her when she is his sister. That's right. And then she pretends his to be his sister. Right. So he can get it up again. <laughs> It's That's kind of good. funny, like how hard that they funny. go at it. Yeah, but I mean that that called to mind that movie "Say It Isn't So" from the exact same year, where Chris Klein thinks Heather Graham is his sister, and they fuck. Okay, I don't remember that. Covering up a, yeah. one sister joke in this? fucking was very popular pre nine eleven. Covering up one joke, I liked in this kind of only because it like in it was the so, second one. Yes, yeah, because it was so absurd and it went on so long. It was when. Um, Patrick Warburton comes back and he, so he's like a motorcycle guy he's with his gang and he rides with a phone book between him and another guy and they're like making a joke like you would only have an envelope because <laughs> you're gay but it goes on <laughs> for like so long it's so absurd I, I also I also like at the at the very end of that scene like there's like a few minutes since they've even mentioned the phone book it ends with him going let me grab my phone book and, <laughs> yeah. and they show him picking up from the ground and then they see him later and he's like looks like your phone book's gotten a little thinner <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad yeah, you know I was thing. actually Patrick Warburton, I was kind of fine with for a little while. It was just he kept popping up and he, as yeah. different characters. At one point, they like sort of lose interest in the past stuff, and they just make it. It's a wonderful life for a while, where Patrick Warburton's the guardian angel, like bringing Joe Dirt around. Places. And it's like a lot of jokes about him touching his dick, which isn't very funny. Well, you know, we're just obsessed with dicks. Yeah. Um, I when, get I, well, it. when he showed up, I was like, "All right, well, he's just going to be my MVP." But then that, toward the end, I was like, "No, this is like, this is too much, too yeah, much." Yeah, I, I considered him as LVP he's so bad. Oh no, I don't, I don't think but so. I think I gotta go Dennis Miller again because, I mean, they give him more rope to improv in this movie. Like in the last movie, he's That's a good call. He's annoying, but he's mostly just the framing device narrating the movie and that's what he is again in this movie just a framing device but for no reason but for no reason and every time they would cut to him they would let him improvise for like five minutes straight and And, break the and it would just be a lot of and it would just be a lot of shit like looks like willie starge will hit you with a bat uh yeah um and he's like this is joe dirt too oh this is not very funny what are we doing here he's like a lot of jokes like that yeah yeah that's a good yeah, take. yeah. He was like, the continuity doesn't matter, right? It's Joe Dirt too, and I'm like, try harder. Just try a little yeah, it harder. It does matter because I'm it having to watch matter. this right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. I'm wasting. Like you made this 20 minutes longer than the last one. I'm wasting an hour and 50 minutes of my life watching this. You can at least pay attention to continuity. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna agree with you. That's my LVP too. I, I wasn't settled on one. I, I thought maybe McGrath, but that's a good call. All right. I give this movie a one. 
yeah me too i feel like uh, since i've been here we've done i've done a lot of ones and i it bumps me out well we keep watching such bad movies what's up you know when david spade he there's the scene where the, it's sort of exactly back to the future part two where he goes to like an alternate present yes. and it's very dark and like mark mcbrath is in charge and he sees Brittany daniel and Brittany daniel is sitting there just wearing like a red dress <laughs> and, he, yeah. and he has this line where he's like you used to be sweet hot but now you're slutty hot in this timeline or whatever and it's like dude in your world she's just constantly wearing belly shirts and cut off denim shorts right exactly like, like she's slutty in your life too i got news for you she's slutty hot always she's actually classier looking at this red dress bro yeah she's just not like rich slutty hot yeah she's more like it's like in real life she's like trailer park hot but in in this alternate reality she's like melania trump hot it's like the difference between diane and janelle <laughs> oh my god a little bit like that a little bit that's fair oh wait but i wanted to bring that wait we we, we we dropped that by i started talking about mcgrath on sugar ray and i wanted to say back when we were doing that that it's funny I, that occurred to me while i was watching this that what you probably know him primarily for well no, is, i know sugar a, ray well, you know the hits and shit, but like... Well, I know him also. He shows up in Scooby-Doo. Sugar, Sugar Ray is like the villains in Scooby-Doo. <laughs> what? You don't remember that? No. They go to like Monster Island or whatever, and Sugar Ray is there, but they're actually monsters. And they, Is they... that the second one? No, the first one. Oh, shit. Yeah, with uh, Isla Fisher. Yeah, I have no memory of that. Yeah, well, um, get excited. I will, sure. Yeah. What but no, I, I know him from a few things. Oh, yeah, So he, but he was on Celebrity Big Brother. He did pretty well. Yeah, very well. Fourth place. <laughs> Who beat him? That was the first season, right? The first season. Well, do you want to, do you want to guess? Do you know any of them that placed ahead of him? Yeah, the winner was uh, Marissa Jarrett Winoker. Is that right? That's right. From um, Harrisbury or whatever. Yeah. And uh, did it Ross Matthews? Yeah. Who's third? I don't remember that. Uh, she was Miss Universe for a second, maybe? Or maybe Jesus she won? Christ. Ariadna something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, was she that. the one that won, or she won? She fake won. I, <laughs> I don't recall. Yeah, I don't remember either. Oh, that's right. She was involved in the Steve Harvey yes. fuck up. Yeah, yes. I remember that. <laughs> Great yeah. times. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I did we do this? I you have it a to one? assume she lost, or else she probably wouldn't be on Celebrity Big Brother. I don't know if you get paid a lot of money if you win, but I don't know. What was it that you asked me just now? Did we do the thing where I give it a one? Yes, but did I give All it a right. one yet? I don't. Did I give an MVP? No, I'll give it a one too. Uh, yeah, you did that. I think. Um, Jesus Christ! I, I mean, I hate who David Spade. No, I think she's the definition of stay ready, so you don't have oh! to get ready, Brittany Daniel. Wait, so maybe I'll just do that. I think for the entire Whoa, Joe Dirt franchise, MVP, Brittany Daniel, LVP, um, Dennis, Miller. Uh, Dennis Miller. Yeah. I'll tell you, when it, when it I didn't know the guy's name was Dennis Miller in the first movie. And when I started the second movie, it said Dennis Miller. And I was like, oh, Larry Miller's in this movie? And I was kind of excited. And then like the movie started going and Larry Miller didn't show up. And I went on IMDb. I was like, oh, this guy's Dennis Miller. I didn't know that. Larry Miller's a hero of mine because he went to my high school. He's the most famous person to ever go to my high school. And because he's the doorman in the episode The Doorman of Seinfeld. Yeah, and he's hilarious in that. And he's the dad in 10, Ten things, things I Hate About You. Yeah, yeah. classic. Incredible. Uh, and he's fucking waiting. He's so funny in Waiting for Guffman, those Christopher Guest movies. He's great. Anyway. Yeah, I haven't seen him. Yep. Wait, you got to see those Christopher Guest movies. You should at least see Waiting for Guffman and Best in Show. Is that a franchise or that's just the guy? No, made... no. Christopher Guest just he he's a he's in this is Spinal Tap. Like he got to start doing like Canadian comedy, like it's SCTV and shit in the late eight in the late seventies. And um, this is Spinal Tap. He wrote and stars in and shit, and it's a mockumentary. He sort of pioneered that style. And then in the early nineties, he started making his own movies like that, where he was directing them, and they're completely improvised and they're fucking brilliant. The cast is 
like stacked like insane. It's Eugene Levy, Fred Willard, Catherine O'Hara, Parker Posey. It's wow. like all the funniest people. And uh, she's killing first- it on the staircase right now, Patrick po- or uh, Parker Patrick Posey. Posey. Parker I didn't know Posey. she was in that, but that's great for yeah, her. Yeah, she's crushing it. Um, but yeah, Waiting for Guffman and Best in Show are his first two, uh, and they're just both five star all time classics. Like not a bad moment in any of those movies. Okay, all right, yeah, check them out. Uh, yeah, much better than the Joe Dirt films, I'd argue. Yes, I would hope so. Okay. Um, how did I get on that? Oh, fucking Larry Miller. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Um, let's move on. That's what are we Joe doing Dirt. next week? I, ra- I rank them one, two. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I guess next week, uh, Timmy, we're bringing Timmy on. Yeah. Tim Tim. Is he doing all of them or just the, f- or? Maybe just the first two. Uh, it's up to him, I guess. Yeah. Whichever, whatever he wants. Yeah. So. I, so what is next week? What was the order these fuckers came out? I believe it's the Lego movie and then the Lego Batman movie. Um, I'm looking it up right now. And then I think it's Ninjago and then the Lego movie hey, too. Ninjago and Batman came out the same year. Let's find it out. Oh, really? Ninjago think that was, third, though. was September. Batman was... Deb. Yeah, so we're next week is the Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie. And then the following week will be the Ninja Go movie and Lego 2. Yeah, I'm excited. And you've not seen any of these? Yes, I have. I oh, you saw enjoyed Lego movie. the original Lego movie. Right. I just didn't see any of the others. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Actually, a girl made me watch. I never would have watched the Lego movie, but I was like on a date. It was like a second date, and I was like, I could probably get laid if I watched this Lego movie. Did it? Did you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Hell yes. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Thank you. Um, That was a big movie when it came out. I feel like you might have it seen was. it. It was. It was a big deal, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't know much about it. Like, when I saw it, I was surprised by all the things I liked because I thought it was just like a Lego movie for kids. But then, like, it was rather moving, and it's a really good script by Lord and Miller, and um some fun references and shit you know yeah and uh i love i'm a big lonely island guy so that was fun for me everything is awesome awesome oh they did that i didn't know that yep they wrote that with uh tegan and sarah oh okay well <sighs> get excited we also did an x-men commentary track on the patreon if you would like to listen to that i think it's so funny the the video re- the little video clip reel that logan put together that's on youtube and and twitter is really really good yeah, uh, so find that if you want to. If not, then you're kind of a loser because I think that's really funny and you should. Yeah, it. it's only fucking five dollars, and you get. A, it, we have so much shit. Like I, I subscribe to some Patreons, all right, and some Substacks. How about that? And some OnlyFans. Not anymore. Oh, <laughs> but uh, and I gotta say, we're providing way more content. Yeah, there was a there was a day last or a few days ago where we did like four days in a row. We had something uploaded. Yeah. So fuck you guys. Like, if you <laughs> like the show, it's fucking fine. Help us out. Yeah. Bitch. Don't do it for us, though. Do it for you. There's so much shit on there. Do you like Big Brother? We got the best Big Brother coverage you could mm, ever ask for. Come on. For. That is not the way to sell this. <laughs> it should be, though. That, that's the best stuff there is. But we do. We we did that ranking shows. We do commentary tracks. We've done like four of them now. If you miss we, Henry, go listen to all Henry's old stuff. Yeah, we've got a whole backlog of Henry material on they there, They ranked too. Brad Pitt, probably, if you like Brad Pitt. <laughs> who doesn't like Brad Pitt? We ranked a lot of shit, man. We played a lot of games. Like the, Letterboxd. The Patreon, the Patreon is good, dude. Like, there's good shit on there. Yeah, really good shit. Five bucks. Patreon.com slash the franchise. Um why not leave a five star rating or review on iTunes as well? Oh yeah, nobody does that. I don't think people do it. I I forgot. I think people don't do it anymore because I keep forgetting to mention. For fuck's do. sake, because we don't say that anymore. We have to say for fuck's sake, everybody. Yeah, leave us uh, a five star the, uh, review. Can you find the theme, the for fuck's sake theme I, that we used? Oh, uh, that's a lot of work. Is it on the website? It might be. For fuck's sake, close the deal. Let us know that you are for real. For fuck's sake, leave us a star. You don't have to write nothing, we won't know who you are. For fuck's sake, you motherfuckers. For fuck's sake. I did want to read this review from Angelica Joyce from just a a week ago or something. Okay. Uh, Dying laughing over Henry's reaction to Fifty Shades of Grey. She's she's a recent Patreon subscriber. Going back, listening to the backlog. That's what people should be doing. 
All right. Dying laughing over Henry's reaction to Fifty Shades of Grey. I love when Shandy comes on the show. Love the Twilight coverage because she brings a depth to sex talk that I love so much. It's not just me talking about pussies and shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and then she writes, Daniel, as usual, just in love with everything you say. How about that? Logan? Wow. Me Pretty too. D-train. That's why I do you, this show. You fucking wish that review was about you. <laughs> Yeah, I do. No, I don't. Don't talk about me. I feel like it's all going to be negative. Just say how you how much you love the D train, or don't say anything I, at all. I also want to thank uh, Aussie Scott because he still leaves reviews, and and I think that's proof he's not uh, Henry. Yeah, or maybe he's, he's going Henry, out of his way. Henry doesn't give a shit about the show anymore. Does he not? I mean, I have no idea. He asks about it. I feel like I, I get it. If I was on something and then I wasn't on it and like some new kid came on, I wouldn't listen either. It'd be a bummer. I read that the um, the creators of Gilmore Girls, after they left after season six in a contract dispute, never watched season seven until the reboot just because they didn't want to fuck up continuity. Was, it, was seven good? No, it's horrible. They were right not to watch it. <laughs> Is that like this show? Is Henry right not to listen? Uh, no, no. I, I love... I, I really, honestly, like, I'm being totally real right now, Logan. Like, I think the show's great right now. I, I'm enjoying doing it more than I ever have before, um, which isn't a slight on Henry. Like, Henry's one of my best friends ever. Yeah. Uh, but I really love doing the show with you. It's super fun for me. And it's less work for you, which has got to be good. Much less work. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's a great balance right now. For sure. I hope it is for you, too. Yeah, I'm loving it. Like McDonald's. Exactly like we thought. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> all right, let's wrap up. Uh, fucking, you know, y- you want to set up what well, we did, right? Fucking next week, Sweet Home. What? Sweet Home Lego. 